Morning, y'all. <laughs> Today we get to talk about an old friend, the great imposter. And who am I speaking of? Why, none other than the unconscious ego. Yay! <laughs> so, while some of this may not fall on receptive ears, you can be sure those ears are the unconscious ego that is here paying attention to what's being said about it, expecting only compliments. <laughs> so, the unconscious ego, hey, it's, it's, it's really good at protecting its stories. I mean, really good. In fact, it finds so many ways to justify and defend every idea, every action the person wants to keep around. Then on the other hand, it'll mitigate, denigrate, and avoid any and every idea or experience that challenges how the person wants to view himself, view others, and view life. So do be tuning in to see if any of this rings true for what's going on in your life or someone that you know. By the way, all of this that I just said, it puts a person into tunnel vision. Tunnel vision about life. And it blocks from view many events, ideas, and situations that would fall outside of what the ego would want to accept. So, one of, the, one of the ways, as a matter of fact, a favorite way that the ego finds to protect its story is to justify, hey, it just had to happen. I mean, we know that, right? It just had to happen. But this is really a fatalistic justification. And it neatly avoids looking within to how the person may have helped co-create the situation. It also avoids looking at, the, looking at the beliefs that underpin the action the person took. And it also avoids looking at any fears or insecurity the person may have. So now we come to a thing of, it looks like they're, they're separate, but they're really connected. Know yourself. And at the same time, know your ego's defenses. Okay. One key aspect of the spiritual path is that it leads people to answering this question. Who am I? Up to the point of being in an unconscious relationship with your unconscious ego, you have believed you are what the ego tells you. So, in this, you look and you see, one of the key, tra key traits that ego has is it attempts to keep you safe. These two forces, very often conflicting, because who the ego wants to be and who you actually are are different. By and large, the ego's interest in wanting to keep you safe will lead you to identify with different traits, people, and situations that appear to be safe. Anything that might question that identification can be seen as potentially unsafe, and because of that, the ego finds ways to stop any further inquiry. So if you're starting to get a little squirmy right now, stand up and shake yourself and then get back down and get receptive again because we've just begun. <laughs> okay, now we get into a path. It will even try to use spiritual truths to aid its quest in self-preservation. And, you know, some, sometimes people will say, I'm sure you've heard this, maybe even come out of your own mouth, Nothing ultimately matters, right? But when it's used this way, you see, it stops being a spiritual truth. 
It's now a justification for something. And that something is very possible. Whatever it is the ego wants to do, or already is doing, it holds in place. The ego thinks that it's very, very clever. But in, actu in actuality, it's very, very stupid. I'm sure just delighted in hearing those words. <laughs> you know, but it, it, it really is. It's easy to see through the more you learn to look for these defenses. As you do, you begin to realize just how truly stupid and ignorant they are. But realizing these things, however, is a part of cultivating your true intelligence. Now, the ego, we know, it has more than just a few defenses. And when things along the spiritual path get serious, it'll find ways to threaten you. But ego threats, they're actually a good sign. They're a sign that you're moving outside of your comfort zone and you're exposing something that doesn't want to to be exposed. So the closer you get to some powerful truth or realization, the more the unconscious ego will scream its threats and object, such as, I can't do this! This, this is too overwhelming. I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to die! By the way, I read this out of your book. <laughs> Drama is a way to distract you and to frighten you into submission. The problem with these justifications, threats, and other egoic defenses, they get clearer because you begin to realize they keep you trapped in your identity. The more you allow yourself to be frightened by ego, the more you will do any and everything it tells you. The more you will do anything other people tell you. It leads you to being susceptible to manipulation by others. So look at where we are right now. We're talking about Drama and fear being used together to cause you to come to a place of submission to that fear by feeling you must do this. Look at, look at what's happening right now in the world. Social distancing, wearing masks, and out of what? Because it feels so good to keep your distance from others because they have halitosis. And then it makes you feel so good to wear a mask because you don't like breathing well. And all of the other things that are going along right now, they are being kept in place and ratcheted down even more because you allow your ego and its fear to dominate your choice making instead of paying attention to what's going on and choosing to recognize it for what it is. And if that doesn't work, well, then the ego will start bargaining with you. It'll say, you know what? We've given up enough. We've let go of all of this, but I'm going to hang on to this last thing. And then, if that doesn't work, then the ego, hey, it'll just stick around and It'll, it'll make these, these changes, but you'll recognize they're really superficial. As a matter of fact, it says, hey, I'll become the spiritual ego. <laughs> okay? It'll put on all sorts of spiritual clothes and ideas to dress itself up, and then it'll say, ta-da, <laughs> we're spiritual. We figured it all out. 
and then it hopes that you'll stop your inner investigation. But see, you have to be smarter than this fraud. Don't settle for part way on your spiritual path. Go all the way. So in case there's a little misunderstanding there because your, your ego is trying to create a little misunderstanding, let's see what the true spiritual ego is and the spiritual ego that's really just the old ego in new clothes. You see, the true spiritual ego knows that it's, it's, it's just a lens. It can be used and discarded in the service of the divine. The other spiritual ego may say the same thing while attempting to attain its goals and maintain its agendas. For instance, hidden issues around the fear of being alone that have not been resolved will rear up again. And a person in this example will work hard looking for their soulmate or their twin flame. This person still doesn't know why they need to be in relationship, but the idea of a spiritual relationship now becomes the ego's new goal. There may be many other ways that the ego tries to grow back. Some people think that eating spiritually means that they, they never get sick while eating whatever spiritually means to them. Perhaps there's a hidden issue here with the fear of pain or death. Others will seek out a spiritual purpose to help others. But this very often hides the deeper wounding in the well-meaning helper. It can also hide the issue of a lack of self-worth. This type of ego needs to get affirmation. It needs validation. It needs positive feedback from others somehow. So being a spiritual healer, a teacher, a counselor, or something else seems, it seems like the way to achieve it. There can be so many ways where this spiritual ego can rear its head. But as you become more tuned into its games, you'll get quicker and quicker at seeing all of its telltale signs. So this then brings us to the place where we are right now. Hyperventilating, feeling our pulse really starting to beat rapidly and faintly, but also at the same time we're realizing, hey, We've got to give up the ego again and again and again and again. Because if the hunt doesn't continue, you're going to wind back up in a new cage. You're going to find yourself in a new trap because that's the way the unconscious ego works. But there's always another chance. The great thing about the ego and your karma, notice the combination, is that they, they, they keep on giving you more chances, more opportunities to work on them. You see, they're not going anywhere. Why? Because they're in you. Didn't that just feel good? So that was almost like having sugar corn pops for breakfast, wasn't it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, outside of divine intervention, which I don't really recommend, we have to actively face these things. But fortunately, you'll get to notice their telltale signs. You'll get better and better at identifying them and engaging with them. Aha, uh -huh. I'm feeling fear. Instead of just stopping right there, you then go and say, 
Why am I feeling that? You choose to go down the rabbit hole instead of saying, get thee behind me, Satan. You begin to open yourself up. Oh, here is some regret. What is being regretted? What feels like it's been lost? So you start paying attention, you start asking the questions, you start pursuing so that you find out what it is that you have in you that is your link, your connection to this unconscious ego that is projecting these fears, these anxieties that you then begin to look inside yourself and say, all right, this is part of my growth. This is part of my awakening. This is part of me learning how to be masterful with what stuff comes to me from ego. So, I've almost beat you up enough. We're right at the last last part of this, so. Resting in a true Spiritual ego is no big deal. And the reason for that is because you're nobody. Nobody doesn't need to be somebody. Notice how it is with ego. Ego always has to be somebody. Nobody is totally unacceptable. So when you don't need to be somebody, you can be anybody depending upon the demands of the current moment. It's an incredibly flexible place to live your life. And it's what the unconscious ego has been avoiding probably all your lifetime way beyond your current conscious remembering of how and when this all started in your life. So, the great imposter? Yes, yes. The magician? (laughs) Really? (laughs) The great pretender? That too. So thank you very much for your attention. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.